Hi people. So I just wanted to come and say a few thoughts that I have about the whole situation, whatever is going on, especially in the Web3 community with Bitcoin, the market going down, the discussions that are going on with no Ethereum now, having their chain migration and stuff like that. Let's come back for a second. And I want us to think about what the objective here is with the Web3 movement. Like I really love when I see people cherishing their NFTs and I have appreciate that they are adoring this new form of technology but why have we now given it more value currently than what it is it is a new form of technology let's zoom out and let's look at 2008 when more or less all of this began the housing crisis led to many people losing their homes their savings a lot of big companies who were considered too big to fail losing their market value their market share and this led to a big crisis more or less and then came the government bailouts and these bailouts probably did save american economy and now we are thriving until this year when the downturn happened but that was probably one of the longest times of upward growth in us economy so in hindsight they were good bailouts but back then people were not too in favor of them why does lehman get a break while i am suffering i lost my house too. and us citizens who were angry i mean globally people were angry aig was one of the biggest at fault in the head of europe so these bailouts led to a lot of discussions and satoshi was one of those guys who took it personally and was like this is kind of fucked up and he decided to create and reinvent the financial system where people hold the power it's not the government who controls where our money flows because at the end of the day the tax breaks the money that was given to lehman to be or to other the, the big firms was our money our tax dollars that we are paying to the government to provide improvement in our life so how is that technically doing it at that time people couldn't see that how important it was to save those companies and now we are seeing those benefits more or less and we'll see how the re- economic restructuring has taken taken place but those are the things that in the discussion that I want to do for this video satoshi was a genius what he envisioned peer to peer transaction system just like venmo today would work where people would be able to control where their money is going and collectively you could uh, see where these transactions are happening who are who who is Uh, sending money to whom and in a hypothetical world if this is how government receives our tax dollars as well and we could see hypothetically where government is spending our tax dollars and how much of it is going or not it solves this technical problem of double replication i mean it shouldn't go, i don't want to go into that but it was kind of very inventive at that time and it struck a chord with a lot of people that yes our financial system should be decentralized and it shouldn't be centralized and it makes sense why people shouldn't have control over where their money is spent and uh, this led to a long movement which was no matter how big crypto might seem now but very small for the longest time like up until 2012 13 we didn't really have any other cryptocurrencies and then suddenly we start we started to see ethereum pop up doge and multiple other cryptocurrencies started to come around who weren't i would i shouldn't categorize them as cryptocurrencies to be honest i should call them as blockchains that have different use cases i should i, I would say that. but they work on a similar technology pattern which satoshi kind of invented well i don't know i'm not sure invented but yeah people can correct me if that's the case if my word page is wrong there now where i'm going with this like i know i've given you this whole brief what happened is satoshi focused on money being the driving motivator to make change it led to corporate greed and i will talk more about it but because of this we are now seeing the issues that we are seeing because we have forgotten what is the most important aspect here is is how is this piece of technology providing value to us ethereum for a, its great concept that it is smart contracts is awesome in terms of if i want to sell art online which is like a very good use case but can be used for multiple other purposes but it was built uh, on the architecture and understanding that bitcoin provided us and now that bitcoin has become what 400 billion dollars after falling one third from its peak in january it still is very valuable it's one of the biggest asset that we have and we just created it like we are not now asking what value bitcoin is providing if people want to call it digital gold and i understand and now i see chamat i see mark cuban i see a lot of people that i have looked up to for years techcrunch had some ceo from i don't want to say coinbase but i'm guessing coinbase coindesk one of these ceos and he was talking about 
how Bitcoin is now not a peer to peer transaction system because it's not going to be. It doesn't support the number of transactions that we in a minute or in a second need sustainably with the architecture that it currently functions on. So it will never be a Visa or Venmo or anything like that. It just won't be. So it's going to be what? A store of wealth for people who have been harboring money in there for the longest time. And they knew it was a bet, right? Everybody knew that Bitcoin is going to provide like a framework and understanding on how the cryptocurrency market works. But isn't that the same when the computer was invented or when, you know, 1985, Apple II came out, it revolutionized everything. 2004, when Google search engine become, became widespread, globally useful, and then it revolutionized search. 2007, iPhone revolutionized the way we use smartphone. These were big moments. And then in 2008, the mention of Bitcoin by Satoshi is a big moment. And what it led to is what we have right now with Ethereum now migrating to um, such an energy efficient chain. And I don't know how it's going to affect the users personally yet because there are mixed reviews that I'm hearing in terms of who's going to have the power. So I'm not going to get into that discussion, but it's going to be 99% more energy efficient. And that is something that most people can agree upon. And there's... Similarly, we have cases for so many of new blockchains that provide so much more value. There are blockchains now where you can use you use for data storage. There are blockchains now which can allow you to do that people are working AI and machine learning upon. There are blockchains that people are using for social media and other purposes. And these are going to have their own future. Their, how their tokens are going to work and integrate with the current financial system is a whole discussion that we're going to have later eventually down the line. But with Bitcoin, there is no use case left anymore. And why are we not talking about it? Like, you know, when people compare the 2000 internet bubble burst to the Web3 bubble burst, and it just baffles me that we, we although name this Web 3.0, but these two bubbles are so different when the bubble burst, like Amazon's share price value went from 200 to $8. But I remember Jeff Bezos talking in one of his interviews where he mentioned that although it went to $8, my share price, and I should have freaked out, but I could see my balance sheets and see that my number of orders are increasing, my number of inventory efficiency is increasing, my supply chain is improving, my profits are increasing, my cost of storage is declining. So all the numbers seem positive, so it doesn't reflect what the market is saying. And that just made me wonder that, yeah, that was the same case with PayPal. That was the same case with so many other companies around that time. Because these were actual companies who were making profits and it made sense for them to be on the stock market or if they weren't on the stock market, but for them to exist because they were trying to create something valuable. And I understand that with crypto, they are doing the same. But when we are buying these crypto coins or these tokens, we are investing into more or less companies that aren't profitable yet. There are just proof of work or concepts yet. Look at Doge. It was founded in 2013. Its founders dropped the idea in 2015, thinking because they knew there was a mockery to Bitcoin. And it still is so much more valuable because it's an idea, it's a concept. But there are no people at the back end who are making profits. Like if you are losing money in crypto, then somebody else is making money. And if you are making money in crypto, then somebody else lost money. And I understand in business it's like that, but that's not the case. And when you're buying something from Amazon, Amazon is providing you service. That's creating value, making your life easy. Right now, Doge may, maybe in future, if it's used as like a token for to purchase some stuff or transactions might create some value. But for now, it shouldn't be worth as much as it's worth because it's not a business. It's just a concept. And we've forgotten that, it seems like. Like, why isn't value creation important? It should be more important than these ideas that we are just nimbling around. And with Bitcoin, it's the biggest driver and the face of the Web3 movement. And it's so sometimes confusing and angers me as well when I see uh, representatives go in Congress and then use Web3, Bitcoin, cryptocurrency like they're the same thing. And it's not. It just doesn't make any sense. Bitcoin was the first cryptocurrency to come into existence that used the blockchain technology. Web3 is the umbrella that kind of just covers DAO, crypto, all the other, th other things that are going on in the whole blockchain technology space. And then cryptocurrencies are similar to Bitcoin, but to be honest, have way more use cases now because they have 
built on top of the technology that was given to us by satoshi so i understand that people have invested way too much money on it but isn't it funny that now bitcoin is the same as lehman too big to fail like because it's worth 400 billion dollars in market cap but has no use case apart from being a store of wealth but it's not even a good store of wealth it's just not a good store of value it doesn't make any sense like just think about it how is it a good store of value there are so many sharks like micro strategies michael saylor there is those wilkin ross brothers tesla had such a high tesla is a very good example to say that it's not a good store of value gold is worth 11 trillion dollars in market cap but one person can't just offload gold and tank its entire value like tesla did with bitcoin tesla just sold a billion or 2 to billion dollars worth of bitcoin that were that they were holding half of their holdings and it just crashed the value by 10000 dollars how is that a good store of value it's not it's just a use case that we are slapping on to something that we don't know what to do with because we've made it much much more bigger than it is you know bitcoin is no less similar to an iphone first generation google's 998 model of search how it looked like or, or similar to an old mac like it should be in a museum and it should be respected and i appreciate that but it should not be worth 400 billion dollars because it doesn't have a use case anymore and i hope people can see that because i understand you're going to give me great examples of how bitcoin is used in ukraine to transfer funds and i understand that but then there are way better cryptocurrencies out there now who would be able to do the same thing much more efficiently and better and it frightens me that people are now giving bitcoin so much value without asking why we are giving it so much value because there are so many negatives attached to it and it's very evident that these negatives are not going away anytime soon until we make monumental changes made at the back end of bitcoin uses electricity more than almost 100 countries 27 or 20% of the transactions that happen on on it are for criminal activity most people use bitcoin currently just to evade taxes these are not any new use cases that i'm giving you what's one pro it's giving it's just a good store of value it's not even a good it's a store of value there's one pro to it so how does that make it any good for humanity so let's take a step back and actually ask ourselves this question that why are we fooling ourselves with making bitcoin the face of the web3 movement and confusing everybody to, to what it is like it is a decentralized platform but we have made bitcoin the face of it making it a centralized figure that represents how the whole architecture of web3 looks like or the whole future of web3 looks like like if bitcoin crashes everything else crashes if bitcoin goes up everything else goes up but why has bitcoin so much more value as compared to so many other more technologies that are coming around right now that are much more better efficient more useful and provide actual good value and have a, a probable good future in our society while well, bitcoin doesn't serve any of this i hope it made sense